Hello, in this lecture we're going to continue on with our master budget and we are now moving to the raw materials budget. So remember that uh, last time we got to do this in order, last time we did the sales budget. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because, apparently, we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Then we did the production budget and now we're able to do the raw materials budget. And why does it have to be in that order? Because in order uh, to do anything, we got to know <laughs> how much we're going to sell basically. And then we can think about how much we are going to uh, need to produce in order to meet our sales needs and that's where we are at we have these production numbers in units we're talking about units in this case and if we're talking about you know widgets or if we had guitars or something this is how many guitars we would make now we need to know how much material we're going to need in order to make that guitar so how much we're going to have to purchase in terms of raw materials in order to do that remember that in in these types of problems many times uh, uh, what we're going to have to think about is how many units of material does it take to produce one unit of um, product. So and that's what we're gonna take a look at within the raw materials production budget, which must be done after we do the production budget. So we're gonna, we're gonna start off with the production budget in units, the numbers that we just uh, calculated up here. Remember that we are working in the third quarter being July, August, and September. And we're just going to pull these numbers down. So I'm going to say this equals what we came up with in the production budget. This is how many units that we believe we need to uh, produce in uh, July. In August, we believe it's going to be 20. And yes, you can copy and paste this over and it would work. And uh, 20,005 for September. Next, we're going to need the material requirements per unit. So basically, these are the units we're going to make. And we're going to say, well, how much raw material, how many how many things do we need in order to make that? So if it's a guitar, we would need, we'd be talking about how much wood would, would we need in order to make that. We're going to have to get that from the problem. Obviously, in real life, we would have some kind of estimate of how much material it takes to make each of these things. And uh, we're going to take that from the problem. So the problem is going to have to give us somewhere that uh, how much material it will take. And in this case, we have right here, raw material units per uh, finished, it's 0.5. So 0.5 units. So we're going to be up here. We're going to say it's 0.5, enter. And that's how many units that we will have. Then if we multiply that out, then for the 19,586, uh, we're going to say it's only going to take the 0.5 units. And therefore, we would need 9,793 units. We're going to do that for August. Whoop. Well, first I got to put the 0.5 all the way across. 0.5 for August and 0.5 for September. So for August, we're going to say this is how many units we need to produce times 0.5, which is the amount of the material per unit. And that will give us uh, August. September will be the 20,005 times, once again, the 0.5. So that gives us the materials needed for production. However, just like we had up here when we did the production budget in, in total units, we also down here might want to have some inventory left over at the end of the month. So in this case, at the end of July, we might want to have some left over and therefore we, we would want to budget for that. We want to say, okay, I want to have some kind of cushion uh, if I if we make 9,793 units. We also want to have some left over. Let's plan for that. We're going to need some type of plan for that. Uh, a problem is going to have to give us some type of plan for that. So in this problem, we have ending raw materials percent of next month's material. So there, we're saying 50% of next month's materials needed. So what that is trying to say here is we're saying next month we're going to need uh, 10,000 units of materials needed for production. We want to have a general rule that we want to plan for ending inventory of 50% of next month's. That's going to be kind of our cushion rule that we will have. So for July, we're going to say this equals 10,000. That's what we're going to need next month times 0.5. Enter. 
we're gonna we want 5,000 basically left in the warehouse as of the end of July. In August, we're gonna say, well, that equals the 10,250 units that we'll we need in production in September times 0.5. That's kind of the cushion that we're gonna want in uh, August. And then we get to September, and, you, and of course the question is, well, we, we only have the three months here. We're only working on this quarter. How am I gonna get this number? And the problem's gonna have to give us that in some way. Uh, they can either give us what the material needed for production is, so we can take 50% of it, or they can just give us the number. This this problem just gives us the number here. So we see that uh, raw materials and units, they gave us this, this number for uh, September in this case. So we're just gonna plug in the 4,000. So then we can add those two up. I'm just gonna add up the 9793, that's the materials needed, plus how much we want in the in inventory. We're gonna do the same thing for August. We're gonna say we're gonna produce the uh, 10,000, the amount needed, plus the budgeted ending inventory. And of course you could copy and paste this. I'm just gonna calculate it three times so we can see it. September, we want the 10,002, that's how much is needed, plus how much we want in the cushion for ending inventory. So that would give us the total material requirements. That's what we're going to need. For example, for July, we're gonna need 14,793 in materials in order to make the production. You might think, well, that should be it, but it would be it if we uh, were starting from scratch there. However, this is not our first month of operations. Therefore, we probably have some materials left over from last month. So in, in terms of now we're gonna have to think about, well, what was in there last month and, um, and to pull that out. So if this is what we need to have, then, what do we already have? We're going to subtract that out. Now for this one, let's first think about August. August we can think about because we're going to say, well, uh, we're going to subtract out the beginning inventory for August it must be the ending inventory for July. So we just said that we wanted to end up with 5,000 in ending inventory. That's our plan. Therefore, the beginning inventory for August will equal that 5,000. And of course, the same is true for September, the, the last month in our quarter, we're going to say, well, uh, if August is going to end with 5,125, then September is going to begin with the 5,125. And then, of course, we have this same issue where, well, what about July? Because we're only working on this quarter. So once again, the problem is going to have to give us that in some format. In this case, they give us the number right here. So we're going to say in July, it's going to be 4,925. So we can subtract that out now. So now we're gonna say, well, this is how many units that uh, are required in units, not dollars. And we're gonna say minus what we already have. That means that we're gonna uh, create or produce materials to be to be purchased. That's <laughs> we're gonna buy these things. It's gonna be 9,863. We're gonna have to buy the materials, obviously. And this is gonna be the uh, 15. That's how many that uh, are gonna be needed. This is how many 5,000 that we plan to have on hand at the beginning. Therefore, we're gonna to have to purchase another 10,125. And in September, this is how many are needed minus the amount that we plan to have on hand. That means we're gonna to have to purchase 9,125. So now we could add these across. I'm gonna come over here to the total and add those total units up by saying SUM of the units that we need to purchase of the 9,868, the 10,125, the 9,125. That will give us the 29,118. And so that's how many units we're gonna have. We are, of course, gonna have to pay dollars for these. So in this case, we're gonna to have to find out, well, how much is it gonna cost per unit? And uh, again, this could vary a lot depending on the types of units, of course, that we're, that we're looking at here. In this case, if we scroll down, we're gonna, we're gonna to need to find that, of course, in the problem somewhere. And in this case, we're gonna say that the cost per unit is uh, 21, $21 per unit. So this in terms of dollars, that's how many units we're gonna have. We're gonna spend $21 per unit and we're gonna put that all the way across. Therefore, uh, we're gonna multiply that out, of course. We have the number of units that we're gonna have times the dollars per unit have. So we're gonna spend in dollars, and, and we could put the dollar signs down here as well. So I could uh, make this a dollar sign type of cell like this, and format it like so. I'm gonna get rid of the decimals. And then uh, I'm gonna format paint that all the way across so these are dollars now that we're talking about and, and again you could copy and paste this across i'm just going to do the calculations so we can see them so we're going to take the materials uh, that are going to be needed times the number of dollars for those materials per unit and that's the amount of dollars we're going to spend and then of course we do the same thing for september units needed times the dollars cost per unit and then if we want to do the total we could add them up this way which would give us the uh, 611 474 and we also should be able to add it up this way or multiply it out this way 
the total units, and that should also give us the one uh, six four, eleven four seventy four, and that will of course be the total cost of direct material purchases. So remember how you want to think about this. Basically, you want to think about how many units we're going uh, to need to produce. Then uh, you want to think about how much we want to have in ending inventory for a cushion. That'll give us the units that we're going to need to have on hand. Then we want to subtract out from that the amount of materials already on hand. And that'll give us how many we need to buy. And then we just multiply that unit times the unit price to give us how much it's actually going to cost for these units.